And the question arises after that though, okay, if one accepts that the apostles have this power to forgive sins, they eventually died, the power ended with them. Well, one might say that, and it's a fair point to initially make. The question comes after that. Well, would Jesus give such an astonishing gift, such an astonishing gift to forgive sins, and such a frightening power to refuse to forgive sins to just a small number of men for a small number of years, when we know Christianity is gonna last for at least 2,000 years, and who knows how much longer after today it's going to last. Given that in every generation, there will be Christians who commit sins and who, according to St. James, are to confess their sins to one another. Would this gift just apply to those apostles? Well, it is clearly not the case. Clearly, every generation of Christians needs somebody to have the power to forgive his sins. Because if Jesus, once Jesus has decided he's given that power to some people, that means, that would mean if they are the only ones who had it, then nobody else could forgive sins. If the power is not one that happens uh, just in every believer, that, that God automatically forgives sins, then you need somebody to unlock God's forgiveness, if I can put it that way. Therefore you need, in every generation, somebody who can forgive your sin, or who can hear your confession and decide whether it should be forgiven or not. Thus we have this doctrine of apostolic succession. We normally refer to it in the context of um, the continuation of the authority of the apostles through the bishops down the centuries into our own time, and especially the Pope, because he is the principal bishop amongst all the bishops. But actually we can focus it on a power like confession. A bishop must retain the power that the apostles had to forgive sins. Now since there are few apostles and there are few bishops, there then becomes a practical problem. If there are millions of Christians, they would all be queuing up at the bishop's house 24 hours a day. And all he could do is hear confessions. He wouldn't be able to do anything else. So it follows that the bishop must have others whom he can appoint and transfer that power to forgive sins to. Now, it could have been that there would be tens of thousands of other bishops made. Or it could have been that you could pass that power on to uh, Christians who would, who would have a special ministry, ministry of confessor and nothing else. It happens though, we know historically, that it is the priests who have that power to hear confessions and appointed by the bishop to forgive or to retain sins. We know that from the early writings of early Christians. And in fact, I think I've got in there that some writings of early Christians that talk about confession. But it's sufficient now to, to see that what the Catholic Church does, why it has one of its seven sacraments, the sacrament of confession. This comes directly from scripture from the early Christians, and anyone who denies it is denying early Christianity and it's denying the words of Jesus.